Um, so like when you think about these things, uh, sort of, you know, let's, let's just start in with Elasticsearch and, and, you know, what does it provide for to serve sort of analytics use cases? You know, what's in the kit right now? Sure. So uh, while Elasticsearch was, like we mentioned, built, uh, uh, you know, in purposely for search, uh, it did uh, add uh, various uh, analytics, uh, let's say, features or add-ons uh, along the way. So, for example, they provide Elasticsearch provides ways to aggregate data using uh, metrics and buckets, what we call uh, group buys, and these aggregation queries are basically what power uh, most of the uh, uh, dashboards that you want to look at. Secondly, uh, uh, it, it offers uh, SQL support. Uh, well, some SQL support. It's not ANSI SQL, but it, it, it allows you to do SQL uh, queries on top of Elasticsearch. Thirdly, uh, uh, there are some available approximation methods um, to provide fast, uh, let's say, close but not exact results for count distinct or for percentile queries. And we'll probably go back to that later uh, on where, and where can this be leveraged for analytics. And lastly, uh, it has some support for streaming ingestion. Uh, so if you kind of want to do, uh, uh, you know, if you want to ingest your data in, in uh, close to real time. And so that sounds like a good set of basic foundational blocks. Um, is it enough for, you know, um, is it enough for certain things, not enough for other things? Um, mm -hmm. Sort of complete yeah. set or is it a, just a basic set of functionality. For yeah, I think time, it's a for real time. Real time for instance, yeah, I, I think it's a very good question. And 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 um, for me, like I said, at its core, Elasticsearch was built for search, and and it's very good for that. Uh, the analytics capabilities are not native attributes to the system. However, they were uh, uh, later added. Uh, and because of that, both the performance and the value that you can get from these add-ons is limited. Let me give you two examples. So the first one is that um, those aggregation queries that I mentioned uh, might perform too slow for interactive data exploration that requires you know, very fast. When you are, as a user, explore data, you want to get very fast results. So some of those aggregations, uh, uh, query aggregations I mentioned earlier might not uh, perform well enough for those use cases. Another example is um, what is called top hits, uh, which is kind of Elasticsearch equivalent to top N queries. So I want to do the top N uh, uh, you know, records for something, some kind of measure. Now, the way it's implemented in Elasticsearch uh, actually requires a lot of the work to be done on the client side rather than on the server side. So that obviously uh, impacts performance. So those are a couple of examples, uh, but if you want to tie it down to the four Fs we talked about, so let's kind of uh, go from uh, uh, left to right, top to bottom. So if we talk about fast, first of all, Elasticsearch is not column uh, uh, oriented uh, as it, at, at its core. So when it comes to an, uh, fast analytics, kind of the first method for achieving uh, a good performance is to limit how much data you actually scan in order to return the result. Now Elasticsearch does it through you know, indices, that's true, but it's still kind of row based at its core. Now, uh, uh, um, they actually recognized that limitation and added some sort of column-based uh, um, engine uh, at some point. However, in the, the blog post, they even pointed out that, uh, um, uh, to put it in their words, does that make uh, Elasticsearch a good general purpose replacement for column store? No. As usual, it is better to do one thing and do it well. And I think uh, we should all keep it in mind. So let's do one thing good and do it. Uh, let's do uh, one thing and do it well. Uh, another thing with regards to fast is um, the way you ingest data into uh, Elasticsearch is you send the data into uh, the nodes within the cluster. Now that actually uh, um, uh, kind of forces uh, uh, the ingestion processes to compete on the same resources as with as queries do. So that kind of slows things down. So that's with regards to fast. With regards to fresh, I think uh, uh, Elasticsearch and, and we're trying to be uh, kind of uh, fair here. So I think Elasticsearch is, is pretty good uh, in, in that regard. So it has uh, some sort of uh, um, a real-time ingestion uh, uh, for Kafka and, and I think also for uh, Kinesis. Uh, although it might need a, a third-party support uh, connector here, but uh, but they have uh, some sort of support for real-time ingestion. So that's what we got to fresh. 
Uh, for all, um, there are a few uh, uh, various items here. So two things that come in mind is first, there are some query limitations uh, or, or the breadth of the, the queries that you can do is, is sort of limited. So uh, uh, for example, there's not the, uh, uh, the, the, the options to do um, sort of approximations for uh, count distinct is, is somewhat limited. So I, um, Elasticsearch have a hyper log log and I for uh, kind of approximating count distinct and I think it has TJZ for percentiles, but it does not support uh, uh, most of the data sketches uh, and we'll talk about it uh, later as well. Now, another thing, and, and I experienced the same uh, in my uh, previous role at Nielsen was with concurrency issues. So when you throw a lot of queries in parallel on the system, uh, it, it, kinda, it can bring the system down. So it's not, you know, not necessarily built for, for that high uh, concurrency for analytics purposes. So we covered fast, fresh, and for all. And, and let's talk about frugal, which like we said, sometimes it's even the first in line for most companies. So with regard to frugal, I think there are two uh, interesting things here. First of all, Elastic doesn't support uh, a native rollup. Now, rollup means uh, the ability to summarize the data while you ingest it. Now, think about it. The reason probably it's not supported is because when you uh, when you want to do text search, you you usually want the raw data, right? Think about doing some kind of a needle in a haystack. If you want to find a specific uh, uh, part of a log line from all your logs, you actually need the raw data. Now, in contrast to that. Analytics uh, uh, benefits from doing some kind of pre-aggregation to reduce the data that you actually need to scan uh, and the level of granularity of the result that is acceptable. So for example, uh, uh, rolling up a per second data to minutes uh, is a, you know, a 60X reduction in the storage and most likely a 60X improvement in response time. Now, while Elasticsearch has some kind of uh, uh, initial uh, or offer some kind of initial support uh, for that, uh, it's uh, still a, an experimental feature uh, for, for them, and it's not uh, necessarily production ready. Another major thing here is the substantial uh, uh, resources that are acquired, uh, both for uh, uh, like compute resources for the cluster, and mo more than that, the uh, um, engineering efforts that are required to maintain an Elasticsearch cluster as you grow the cluster, as you grow the number of indices or the uh, indices size, and as you go, the number of shards, etc. So um, those are kind of the two items with regards to frugal. And from again, from my experience, based off on uh, 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 my years uh, at Nielsen, so it can uh, even come up to uh, about two x of the costs uh, uh, compared to Druid, and we'll probably touch on that later. <clears throat> 